Hey everyone, it is us again. Welcome to the second devlog of our indie game, The Wake. First of all, let me say how overwhelmed and happy we were from all the feedback, encouragement and positivity you all sent our way. The channel and our little community are growing faster than we had ever imagined. And it is all thanks to you. Now, today's devlog will be all about our first steps in the game engine. Last video, we told you all about how the German government gave us 100k for free to make our dream come true. So shit got real and now we had to deliver. The first big decision for us was to pick an engine. I will spare you the details, but we took quite some time deciding on the best option for us. Initially, we went with Unity. We took their crash course on their website and felt reasonably ready to take our first steps in the engine. But shortly after, their highly controversial changes to the pricing model went live, so we switched to Unreal Engine in the end. Sick. We didn't want to do a crash course all over again since the clock was ticking already, so we decided to just wing it and hope for the best. But where to start? Like I told you already, we had no clue, so in our naivete, we picked a mechanic that is common for many games and was also essential to ours, an inventory. Sounded like a good idea, but it turned out way, way harder than we had originally anticipated. But starting out, Unreal Game Dev's YouTube tutorials were exactly what we wanted. We cherry-picked the mechanics we wanted for our inventory and just followed along for now. Which means we basically did copy and paste since we did not understand anything of it yet. The tutorial was also 7 years old, so some things didn't work with the new engine version. But luckily the commons always held the solution to a common bug or two. After a few very exhausting first days and weeks, we had a working inventory, where you could drag and drop items, split stacks and throw away items you didn't want anymore. And we even had a storage system in place. Pretty good so far. Wow! This gave us more confidence despite the difficulties. But after this super long and tedious tutorial series, I wanted to do something easier that gave me a sense of accomplishment. I researched a lot about grass and its best practice. Now I had to try out a lot of things and jumped from tutorial to tutorial since it just didn't work out the way I wanted. I thought I was smart and so I just made it emissive. But then I realized we wanted to have a day and night cycle so this wasn't the way either. After working the normals countless of times, it finally turned out well. I learned how to make a gradient to blend it better with the ground and Prismatica Dev taught me how to make it sway in the wind. And then I could just modify this material I had made for the grass and apply it to the trees as well. This felt like really good progress. In the meantime, Maurin decided to take his first steps and followed Ryan Laley's tutorial on a quest system. It was a lot to take in as a rookie and basically came down to copy and paste as well, but in the end Maurin was able to implement the framework of a quest system that we could later just feed with our own quests and rewards. The challenge for us at this point was to make the systems we scripted independently communicate and work with each other. Not really an easy task if you still don't have a clue what you're doing really. Next, I wanted to get started on the day and night cycle and also a weather system. Since the setting of the wake is Lovecraftian, we needed the environment to spark dread and discomfort in the player. We imagined rough seas, fog, rain and thunderstorms. Everything you need for a hostile outlandish environment. Flipside 3D taught me how to make my own volumetric fog and I combined it with the exponential height fog already built into Unreal Engine. 
This turned out real nice, even if I couldn't get the lighting how I wanted it yet. Then I followed Code Like Me's tutorial on rain and thunderstorms. At this point I did my own little changes and I even strayed from the tutorial. This was the first time I felt like I had learned something and I was able to do stuff on my own. It was a very good feeling. And by the end I had a weather control actor that would randomly change the weather every few minutes. Amazing. This was when Maurin also had enough of torturing himself and he decided to step into his comfort zone for a little bit. He wanted to play to his strengths and do some creative tasks. The implementation of a player journal. We wanted to have a nice little sailor's diary with a world map, a crafting tab, a quest log of course, a collection of letters and lore you found exploring the world and a compendium of the different fish and monsters. It would tell you all about them, their likes, their temper, where they are most likely to be found and also their potential loot. Maureen started to implement the UI. Those were his first steps with Unreal Engine's widget system. And I think they turned out pretty nice so far. We agreed to make it functional first and polish it later on. Next, Maureen worked on putting the quest system he made previously into the journal. The goal was to be able to track quests progress in the diary, choose an active quest and pin it to the side of the screen. Done. Now, with all the upgrades we had planned, different weapons and boats, fishing baits, fishing poles and so on, it was only logical that we make a streamlined version of a crafting system. The idea was that the player collects stuff while exploring islands and gets resources from fish as well. And then in the journal you would get the option to craft essential items from it. Maureen was on the job. In the meantime I mustered up the courage to tackle one of the most important things we had ahead of us. The water. I was madly in love with the water in our Ark Nemesis' game Dredge. They did such an amazing job with the foam and the depth fade and I, on the other hand, had a really hard time. I scoured the hellscape that is Unreal Engine stylized water tutorials on YouTube and I found some okayish ones but I always compared them to how awesome Dredge looked in comparison and nothing came close. Still, I went with the one I deemed best for the job and after copy pasting some black magic the person did on Unreal Engine's ocean system, the water looked quite nice. But there was no real turbulence in it, the foam looked more like reflections in a calm lake. I painstakingly tried to combine this thing with my own interpretation of an ocean foam and the result got a passing grade but I was still far from happy with it. Moving on, Maureen had finished a rough version of the crafting system but it didn't work inside the journal yet. What? 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 Now keep in mind that we did everything in Unreal Blueprints. Not a single line of code was written and it should stay like this for a long time. Maybe some of you find that lame, but I find it quite fascinating and also encouraging that you can build a rather complex open world game without ever writing your own code, all in blueprints. Anyway, at this point we were a bit burned out from all the scripting, especially from all the bug fixing, so we took a step back and decided to implement some islands next. It would allow us to get a feeling for the environment and how to move on with design tasks. I was a fool once again because I thought this task would be more relaxing than the programming we did before that. But I'm telling you, boy was I wrong. We hopped in Blender and prepped the main island for expert next and it was a total shit show. Cleaning up the topology was bad enough, but managing materials, baking the maps and exporting every minuscule object would have been enough to make even Sisyphus throw the towel. 
I hated it. The amount of times I did a minor mistake while baking and I had to do it all over again, it was ridiculous. Needless to say that I did just as many mistakes importing into Unreal Engine. But after roughly two weeks, we not only had the main island and all the houses in Unreal, but also some nice side islands. Level design was also something we had underestimated. Because modeling these islands was a challenge of its own, but planning ahead at the same time, which ways the player would be able to take, side paths, shortcuts, dead ends with treasures, and so on, that was quite difficult. Luckily, the islands were meant to be small in scale anyway, since their main purpose was exploration and finding loot. But still, what they were lacking in action, they should make up for in style. So it was essential to make them look nice and populate them with ruins, grass, trees, bushes and rocks. So we initially placed all that stuff tediously by hand and it almost drove us nuts. Not to mention that we had to make sure meshes were touching the ground for each and every one of them. Now, we knew that this would have been way easier if we used the landscape tool to make islands, but since they were actors with individual static meshes that we had, we were not able to use the landscape brush on them. Maurin, in a stroke of genius, found out about the so-called placement tool. It would allow us to make instances of existing meshes like grass and trees, similar to a landscape brush. It seemed much like we had found the holy grail with this one, but wrong. This thing worked well at first, but oh my god, was it riddled with bugs. Honestly, if we had a dollar for every crash this thing cost, we would be able to finance a triple A game by now. Bruh. After sacrificing our peace of mind, we were able to populate the islands though, and it looked very nice, nice. so far. It really helped to set the mood and uh, for the first time it felt like a game when walking around in the test mode. Building on that I also integrated some birds that would randomly fly by. They were inspired by islanders as well and I was able to imitate them quite well but seeing them in action I felt like they were falling a bit short compared to the level of detail we had established by then. I would overhaul them in the future, I told myself. Now, after all that creative work, it was time to get back into blueprints, whether we wanted or not. And this time with another Herculean task, the combat system at sea. It confronted us with a lot of problems and I was busy with it for multiple weeks until it came together. But... I am afraid this is a story for another time, for the next devlog to be precise. It will also be covering how I started crafting the fishing mechanics from the bricks I had laid with the combat earlier, Maurin's efforts in making a world map, including world markers, the design of Lovecraftian fish and much more. It would really help us out if you give this video a like and maybe share it with your friends. As two indie devs, this could really make a huge difference for us. If you want to stay up to date, you can also follow this channel. We are glad to have you here. Also, as I mentioned, our Discord is growing and it's full of nice people where we share some nice little nuggets from development and also discuss fresh ideas and feedback for the game. As always, thank you so much for your attention and for your time. You give us the strength to see this project to the end and we hope to see you again in the next video. Goodbye and follow your dreams.